and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. And I think we're well qualified to talk about this one, Brad. Seven secrets to running without injuries from head to toe. Both Brad and I are well into our 50s, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, yet, we are still running. You know, we've dealt with injuries over the years, and we've figured out what works and what doesn't work. And we're going to help you out, whether you're just starting or getting into it or your body's changing. After you get 50s, you're wondering, why are things changing? And we can help you out. No clue. It's not for the good either. It's not changing for the good. <laughs> if you're uh, new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. What are we giving away here, Liz? We're still giving away the I I really Tens unit. Yeah. You're going to want to subscribe to us because we provide videos on stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and upload every day. And yes, join us on one of our social media channels or all of them. Sure. And uh, if you go to bobandbrad.com and go to giveaways, we're giving away three TENS units, which will help you with your pain. Right. And help manage your pain. Yep. It's also pinned to the top of our Facebook page, which is, which is also Bob and Brad. So, Bob, you know, it's springtime. Right here, right now, it's uh, mm -hmm. beautiful. We came off of a beautiful yeah, April. We're about to have a snowstorm. Right. But anyways, it was <laughs> nice over the weekend. You were golfing, and uh, I did go running. I started running when I was in my late 20s, so I got about 30 years in consistent running and uh, really still enjoy it. But I've run into injuries, a lot of them over the years. You yes. know, everything from calf muscles to groin muscles to hip abductor muscles to well, you hamstring. Just had a hamstring. Yeah, I just dealt with a hamstring. Yeah. Uh, and I feel pretty comfortable now getting you know taking care of it so i can get back at it uh because it can be really a, a psychological issue if you're a runner and you got an injury and you really want to get out there or if you want to start running and you want to learn out how you can run without if you, know, you had people why are you running you're just going to hurt your body you're going to bang up your knees you're never going to last yeah i remember my brother uh picked up running one at one point and started he just went out without stretching he tore his calf muscle <laughs> like the yeah. and that was it right, and right. So, so let's talk with the first thing i've got seven things here you know bob how i am about you seven love seven this seven is complete bob seven is heaven there you go so Shoes. Let's start out with shoes. Now, these are not necessarily in order of importance, but they are all are important. But shoes, now, the type of shoe you're going to pick out is going to vary depending on how you run. Most people that start out are heel strikers. They go heel toe. Right. So you're probably a heel toe striker. You might be a forefoot runner. My wife's a natural forefoot runner without even training. Nice. If you're a heel, heel toe striker like most people, then it gets a little complicated depending on if you have a high arch or medium mark or you're flat footed. You want to make sure you get the shoe that fits you. Uh, I don't have time in the whole video to go through that because that takes... That We've takes, had videos on this right. and you may want to check out those because that's a whole video right. on, on how to pick what shoe is correct for your type of uh, foot. Right. So get the right shoe if you want to go just... Uh, how to choose proper running, walking shoes. Bob and Brad will get you to their specific video. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's. I think the point we're trying to make today, Brad, is that you need to spend the time to get the right shoe. Right. Because it'll make all the difference. I mean, you can run into problems. Right. Run into problems very yeah, quickly. Yeah, no pun intended. No. Uh, so, yeah, take some time. And it's probably likely that you'll get a pair of shoes and they might not be the right ones, but then your second pair will be. Runners have all kinds of stories about shoes. Well, generally, <laughs> what you do as a runner, as I, I, you know, once you find one that works, I buy a bunch of them, <laughs> and then I, when I go back in, I go, "What's the latest one of this now?" Because they I, they yeah, change it, they change it, but they they keep fairly similar. Right. right. And so, but anyway, I don't. We don't want to discourage them right. about the shoe issue. Um, if you are a four foot runner, that's a different story. I'll we'll get into that later. Uh, warm up. There's a little controversy about warm-up. There's been some studies in the last few years where warm-up's not necessary. Why do you warm up? It doesn't do anything uh, anyways. Uh, I personally disagree with that. I do too. As you get older, I definitely disagree with right, that. Right, right. Uh, as far as warm-ups, I don't personally go through an extensive warm-up before I run because I'm not going out and sprinting. I usually start out uh, walking, That's maybe what about I do. a block, and they'll go to a jog. And as I, my body feels warmed up, I will start running that's what um, i do but i do stretching before too sure and, and nice that's kind of an individual thing i think uh so in winter time or if i have the i've got an elliptical in my house that's a really good way for me to warm up uh, I, I yeah just, it gets all body parts going yep yeah, exactly jumping there. jacks is a really nice way yeah. to before you get running um you know if you're a sprinter that's a whole different story we're talking about people who are going out for jogging right. Uh, right. running uh that type of exercise and then the stretch 
Now, a stretch is another thing that some people, you know, will do or will not do. I think the two major muscle groups that you really should pay attention to and stretch are the calf muscles and the hamstrings. I agree. They're the most commonly injured uh, muscles, in my opinion, uh, with runners. With runners. Uh, yeah. So I would do a warm up, the jumping jacks, maybe some walking, and then do some stretching with your heel cords. Yeah. Uh, you can just do a wall stretch where you, you stretch like this. Uh, if you want to get something that's more uh, made for it and it really works well, there's – what do we have here, Bob? We have the pro stretch. But i got to tell you a real quick story. So I saw it in Reader's Digest. So one lady was doing that against her car, doing yeah. the stretch. And another man thought she needed help pushing her car. So he came up and <laughs> she goes, what are you doing? He goes, well, you need help pushing your car? She goes, no, I'm just stretching. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, this is the pro stretch. Uh, they sent us one of these and, and I was like – well, who cares about this? But it actually, it, I use it every morning. It's a great one to do because what's nice about it, it actually stretches the toes too, right. which helps prevent plantar fasciitis. Sure. Or if you have plantar fasciitis. But I just, I get up on it, Brad, like this, and I stretch like this, and I rock it back and forth, and it works out really well. And then I, it's, you can actually pop it off that way because sure. it, it sticks on you. Yeah. So. <laughs> See that? Wouldn't be fun <laughs> running with that. And then the hamstrings. If you're a runner, I'm assuming you're pretty uh, able and have good balance. I like to just bring my foot up on a stair or an object like this and straighten the knee out and stretch. And you can hold it for that 30 seconds a couple, three times. Keep or, your back straight. Yep. I, I don't like to do the hold 30 seconds. I like to just relax, stretch on, pressure on, pressure off, and I'll do that five to ten times. Of course, on both legs. Make right. sure you stretch both legs on both of these. Uh, so those are the two primary groups that we're going to talk about. Um, and then let's talk in the more technicalities of running. Right. Uh, I mentioned forefoot versus heel strike. And if, if this is new to you, when you walk, your heel hits first and you roll through to your foot, to your forefoot. Uh, yeah. When you run, you do the same thing if you're a heel striker. Yeah. Now, in theory, actually not in theory, but that puts a lot more – impact yeah. to your ankle, your knee, and right. your hip you, as well as your back. Yeah, your heel hits and the force comes right up through the body, through your lower leg and right. your leg. And that can be up to 10 times as much as your body weight if they put a force gauge on Both there. Brad and I have evolved from heel strikers right. to forefoot runners because it seems like it disperses the force more. So when we run now, now we're hitting forefoot first. Right. Taking more stress on the calf muscles now. As well as the quads, and, too. And the quads. Yep. But you're taking less stress on the joints of the body that can't right. handle it. So if you're a heel striker and you want to convert to a forefoot runner, uh, don't expect to do it within a week or two. Uh, it took me two seasons, two two summers before I could do it. Sure. Because I started getting, I'd strain my calf oh, muscle. Oh, yeah. It's a lot more strain on your calf yeah. muscle. And I strained my hip abductor muscle doing it too. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so I just kept at it. And eventually, and I, I, I took a running course for, for physical therapy. And they also said, you know, one to two seasons is going to take you to convert from a heel striker to a forefoot runner. There's a book, The Pose Method, right? Yep. P-O-S-E. Yep. Um, and they, they go into great detail on, on how to convert right. to become a forefoot runner. Right. And, and so. the, the, the popular book that's come out in the last few years, Born to Run, uh, is all about forefoot running sure. as yep. well. And that forefoot, I want to step back into shoes if you're a four foot runner you know it's easier to pick out shoes because you usually pick out a minim minimal <laughs> minimalist right a real light shoe uh and you're just striking on your forefoot so you don't need that cushion in the shoe the arch support issue is, is not near yeah, as what important. i found is that once i became a four foot runner i could run with my shoes longer you know what i mean i i, I they lasted longer. they lasted longer sure. because I, I didn't rely on the cushion as much. Sure. So when the cushioning started going down, right. I didn't care. Really. Yep. So. Uh, so, and, and there, supposedly uh, your your speed will greatly increase when you become a four runner. I know runner. they say that. That didn't happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would, uh, but it didn't. Yeah. And then cadence, how you strike. Now, one thing I, I didn't really know in cadence my first. Cadence means the number of foot strikes per, like, per, per minute. minute. Mm -hmm. Right. And the location where your foot touch, touches the ground. Now, this is uh, for more advanced runners. But right. if you're thinking about, I used to think if I stretch out in front of me, right. that I'm going to run faster, more yeah. efficiently. And there, I heard that's people not the say case. this at cross country meets all the time, like, oh, he's a good runner because look, he's got, a, he's tall, he's got those long legs. Yeah, stretching no, out. The key is really to 
to hit get a lot of foot strikes in a in a rapid right. succession. And to do that, your foot should not strike the ground. If you draw a vertical line over your hips, it should not land in front of that. It should be right below it. Mm -hmm. So you're pushing as opposed to going out and pulling and coming through. And there's some other biomechanics with the knee mechanics that reaching out in front of you can give you knee problems uh, with hyperextension, et cetera. But the whole idea is when I, and I start doing this. And I think my time is going to be yeah, faster. Yeah, it does. I, it's, uh, I had a friend that was talking about this. He's a, quite a good runner. And he goes, I'm running behind this older person, and I, and I can't keep up with them. And I'm watching them, and it's like they're striking the foot, you know, the feet so often compared to, the, uh, to what I was. Right. So, so I started doing that, and I pulled up to them. You know what I mean? <laughs> Give it a try. Right. Give it a, a, higher, a higher rate. Right. So I think the, the books we mentioned, The Pose and Born to Run, are two good reference books that you could read if you want to get it step up your running, gotcha. uh, reduce injuries, as well as increase your speed. And the last one, and not the least, is very simple, very basic. If you can run on a non-pavement or concrete surface and, you know, get in a trail, anything that grass or uh, dirt or gravel, any of that takes off stress. You also want to watch the camber of the road. Oh, so, good point. Yeah, if you go down, you know, the road always has a slant. And if you always go down the same slant, you're going to develop injuries. Right. So if you... Yeah, I know for safety wise, you're supposed to kind of what always go uh, against the traffic so you can see them coming. Right. Yeah. So you can see yourself. But I actually hit. go down one side and come down back the same side right. so that I'm I'm varying the angles right. that my my ankles are are dealing with. Right. And, and that feet. yeah, that because the road does curve, so the water runs off instead of into the center. So that's a good. Now, consideration. if you're on a trail that that doesn't have that consideration, you know, right. then you don't have to worry about it because there's lake trails and stuff like just that. Watch just watch out for rocks and ruts so you don't sprain your ankle. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Thanks for watching.